never been to the international part of uh, the Chicago airport before, and I realized it's been since I've been three, since I've flown internationally, so I'm, I'm gassed. I'm hyped. <laughs> Stepping off the plane, you could feel the heat. It's like, I think over 100 degrees here right now. Um, flying in here, I, I realized that Abu Dhabi is essentially just a, they just built a city on a desert. It's pretty crazy. We made it, we made it baby. We just made it past, uh, we made it past the security, the border control immigration. And Xander I'm not gonna lie, had a heart attack. dude. My heartbeat is so fast right now. Being that this is my first time, like they were asking these questions, like, "Why are you here? What are you doing? What do you do for your job?" They were they were looking at me as if I was a criminal, and I, it was just terrifying because I was worried that I was gonna have something wrong. And like I know that they reserve the right to to say no. So I was just like literally shaking. But anyways, uh, Simone, how you feeling? Good. We. We're here, we finally landed in Kolkata, um, like 31 hours later. Um, the airport smells like straight sewage. It smells like straight sewage. I'm ready for it. Yeah, <laughs> it already feels moister. Um, the second flight was really, really good. Really good food the whole entire time. I was really, really impressed. And I'm fairly certain uh, Betty sitting to my left was rubbing one off, but I cannot confirm. <laughs> Ask me about it later as well. It is hot as f and it's so, so soggy out. We're getting into this taxi right now.
Made <laughs> we finally made it. It's been 32 hours since we've gotten a good night's sleep, so we are, well, honestly, I don't even feel that tired, but I'll probably fall asleep really quickly. The next drop that we gotta go right. Stumbled upon a pitch. Kind of cool. Kind of right smack dab in the middle of the city. So one of the things you may notice if you're traveling in India is the, the stench, the open sewer, the trash. There's no trash system like there is in the U.S. Something we I think take for granted. Okay, so at this moment, I am like, we are running into that bus. What is going on right now? And then at the last second, he swerves out of the way, and of course we're fine. We just made it to a mall. We're in a, uh, a little food center right now. It feels interesting because we were just seeing the most poverty we've ever seen, and now we're in a place that kind of looks like America. They have Subway, and there's a Baskin Robbins. We saw McDonald's in here. Got a dosa, and uh, to be honest with you, I just gotta try this. I don't really know what's going on here, but. Simone, what'd you get? I got dal. Okay. And a roti. Nice. Nice. Got some coffee and uh, a little milk drink. Some Pepsi. Bro. Mint sauce, it's so good. Mint sauce? Okay, mint sauce. So like, uh, I wonder what this is. I guess we'll just have to see. A little mini review. The, uh, the dosa was really good. This, <clears throat> I don't know what this is. Simone thought it was uh, like a mint sauce, but it, it honestly tasted like salsa verde. Not sure what that was, it was okay. My coffee was pretty good. Lemonade was good. This was just for free. I think they just gave me that for free. Um, and then this was like a, a curry, and that was very good too. So for like four dollars or three dollars, not bad. So one thing that's really difficult to deal with mentally and emotionally was being inside the mall. The malls were beautiful. Uh, they were really luxurious, but outside the mall, it was pure poverty. Cream. India's magic masala. Spanish tomato tango. So one of the more, I guess, annoying things and experiences that I had was the fact that I was kind of a walking dollar sign wherever I went, even in the grocery stores. We'd be walking around and someone would kind of, kind of you know, walk up and try to sell us something. And it's just like, no, I just want to look around. Okay, I just want to shop. You know, as it got old, it got real old. Four AA batteries, 34 rupees, but that's like, a little over a third of a dollar. We're thinking these are just kind of people's homes. Honestly, I feel bad taking a video of this because I don't want to make this really a spectacle. Dude, we are like at all times inches from being nailed by a car or a bike. What are we, what are we doing right First now, Simone? First the trip. Hell yeah. What time is it? It's uh, five o'clock somewhere. Two, I don't know. Two o'clock maybe? <laughs> Two o'clock somewhere. Heck yeah, cheers. Woo! Yep, tastes like beer. 
No, it doesn't really taste like beer. Kingfisher. It tastes like, like beer to me. It does taste sweet. Dude, the water is absolutely disgusting. Little tuk tuk. This makes Lake Higanza look, Ugh, look beautifully yeah, clean. Like I don't even. Hi! Hello! Hi! Hello. I don't even want to. Hello! I don't even want to, like, even look at it, honestly. It's so disgusting. There are no chance that there are any fish living in there. just got off the train like damn near a thousand people on that train bro remember how I said everybody was looking at us well as it turns out security was looking at us too find this guy all the way to the right in the white right behind him he's about to come up to Simone to tell him he's got to delete all of his video well yes officer of course Just so happened to stumble upon a cricket match.
do you own this shop? Nice. Cool. Are you from, are you guys both from Kolkata? You live here your whole life? Yes. Cool. Now with these three guys right here, there's a bit of a backstory that comes with them. They all are apart and run a cunning scheme where they send the man in the middle, his name is Tosleek, out into the streets to find people to sweet talk them. At first, we thought he was a really nice guy. He seemed very nice. He asked about our family. We talked about the U.S. We talked about travel. Um, but eventually, they have him come and get us to bring us inside the shop. And I get it. I respect the grind and the hustle. And everybody has a family to pay for. And they nearly begged us to buy something. It was as if they were desperate, which they very well could have been. For a job? I went, oh, we're just looking around. We met Tosslin outside and he wanted to show us his shop. So it's... At first, when we came in, we made it very clear that we were just there to look. When we made an attempt to leave multiple different times, they would come back and bring something else out from the back. Maybe I'm being a little dramatic, but it almost felt like we were being held hostage between the three dudes in the shop and the one dude outside the shop. Eventually, they got us to buy a, air quotes, a silver chain for about 2,500 rupees or about 30 US dollar, which may not seem like a lot, but certainly goes very, very far. Mm -hmm. Simone, can you tell us what just happened like within the last half hour? Uh, we're suckers and got, uh, got <laughs> sucked into buying chain, two chains. And Xander bought a pair of shorts. We got godded, bro. We got godded. We, we, got, we got godded. I mean, we saw it before it happened, but we just yeah, kind of let it Yeah, we kind of knew. But we were walking by, and this guy came out. And uh, what was his name? Tosleen. Tosleen. And basically, he introduced himself and was like, hey, you, you want to come in the shop? And then we were kind of like, no, we're going to go find some food. And he's like, where do you want to where, where go? And he took us to a place. He said it was really good. And then... We said, hey, we're gonna, we, we kind of want some air conditioning. And we were kind of like, personally, me, for me, I don't know about for you, Simone, but I was kind of trying to lose him. Because honestly, I just don't know what everybody's antics are. Anyways, we went to, uh, he, he took us to another place that had air conditioning. We got some food. And he waited for us for probably 45 minutes to an hour. When we got out, he was, when, when we got out of the cafe, he was there immediately. And uh, we went back to his shop, or he took us back to his shop, which was like underneath a mall center. And uh, we sat down and we kind of got hustled, but at the same time, we were gonna buy a chain. Uh, I was gonna buy a chain from like Amazon for like the same price as we got it. We got it for like, what, $24 something like that? $25? Yeah. He said it's real silver. And they're kind of fresh, and he said it's real silver, so. Uh, we'll see how our skin reacts. Yeah, I, I have super sensitive skin, so I will know almost immediately, but it, that was funny. And then I got some shorts too, some, some Fadidas, some fake Adidas. But they're kind of fresh and they, I don't know, they look real. All right. Right now we're at the Victoria, the, uh, the Victoria British Memorial. Um, and it is very nice. Simone was kind of just commenting on how it's, you know, this is like the nicest thing we've seen so far. And it's not even for India. It's just kind of paying homage to, to, uh, to England, Great Britain. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's like five dollars, or sorry, it's like five hundred rupees for us to get in, and it's twenty for um, for all Indians. Simone and I just took a, an Uber. An Uber we, we just realized was super, super inexpensive. It was like, for a 20 minute ride, it was like three dollars or something like that like a little little over three dollars um we've made it to the bridge do you remember the howrah bridge i think it's called 
We have Sahara Bridge. There's a, a, a flower market near here as well. If you look up Pokhara on the map, the bridge, or if you look it up online, the bridge will be kind of one of the main attractions. Apparently it's a, it's a massive bridge. You can kind of see it in the distance. And we'll go over there too. Um, Howrah Bridge is supposedly a feat of modern architecture. So we'll check it out. We found the flower market. Grandma, I'm thinking of you right now. You would love this. Grandpa, you'd probably hate this. Here's our, here's our bridge. It's really massive. The really interesting part about this bridge is that there are no supporting beams underneath. It's, that's why it's kind of considered an architectural masterpiece. Sorry. We've, uh, us train buffs, have made it to the Howrah train station. This one's actually bigger than the Salada, I think that one, that's what it was called. This one's actually bigger, I believe. It's crazy. It's, India is actually so profound. I, I prepared myself for the, the filth and the, the crowds, but the, I couldn't prepare myself for just like the magnitude of, and the, the intensity of how, how much is moving and yeah. how many- At all times. At all times, it doesn't stop. And the stench, I did not, I could, there's no way to prepare yourself for the stenches. Nothing like I've ever smelled in my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> not sure if you can see it down there, but um, one of the things that's I don't know, I guess most obviously noticeable if you're from the US or honestly maybe anywhere else is um, the lack of safety. Like way down there, there are people jumping off the train while it's still going. That would never happen. Ocean, OSHA would lose <laughs> mind. Yeah. <laughs> They'd have an aneurysm as we said before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> found ourselves in a train museum. We're not really supposed to be videotaping or, or uh, taking pictures in here. There's a guy, Simone, what did he say? Uh, I think, what did he say? I don't know. He said, no, no camera. Oh yeah, no camera. No camera. <laughs> but uh, this is pretty cool. There's like nobody here and it's kind of desolate, but um, there's all super old train stuff. And honestly, it's pretty interesting. It's a nice getaway from the loud city and uh, traffic. Yeah, it's a nice little park. That's one thing we've kind of realized is um, with all these people, like I, at least personally, I feel like Simona, I gotta take a little break from from all the people. Yeah, it's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. We got, uh, well earlier we got, they call them softies here, but we got two Softies for what was it? 39. 39. 39 rupee. rupee. Um, which 39 rupee is like 50 cents. 
50 cents. For two. Yeah. For two. So 25 cents for an ice cream cone. That's kind of crazy. So naturally, I had to get another one. Here's some Momos. Here's Simone and his American breakfast. This is actually our second morning being at the Little Bistro uh, because we we were, we were kind of searching around for a place yesterday, but we ended up just stumbling upon this one and it was so good that we decided we wanted to come back for more. Um, today we are leaving our hostel and we're going to another hostel that we're thinking is maybe a little bit nicer. Uh, today is our kind of last full day in Kolkata. So not quite sure what we're gonna do yet. We might actually, we've, we found some locals. We might hang out with them later today. So stay tuned. We made it back to the mall we were at the first day. Um, we just went to a hypermarket and got some groceries and stuff. Um, one of the things that's kind of fun is just all of the different products and candies, for example. So they have Oreos, but they have Oreos in the US, of course, but this is a different kind of, I don't think we have this in the US. We definitely don't have this. This is the first rain that I've seen so far since we've been here. <laughs> and um, I was wondering what the city would look like and how it would react to rain because there are just so many people outside all of the time. And there are just so many little like shacks that to me don't really seem water resistant and rain resistant. So I was curious to see what it would be like when it rains. And it is raining so incredibly much right now. Like, look at that. We are underneath, uh, we're in the train station right now, and it is so loud. I'm sure you can hear it. We just got here in time, too. It's kind of fun to be like, it's kind of fun to be in the rainstorm without actually getting wet. Simone, give me a good welcome to India. Welcome to India. <laughs> What's up, boy? What's up, boy? boy? We look like mega tourists right now. It literally, we, <laughs> it started to downpour, and we were like, "Eh, well, we'll just, f it. we will, um, we'll put, we'll put on our, our ponchos. We got them. We may as well put them on." 
as soon as we get outside from the train station, it immediately stops. And now we just look like goofs. People are Every laughing. Everybody's looking at us laughing. You kind of just got to walk straight because honestly, you know, you pretend that you, you want to, yeah, you want to pretend that we look normal. So I got to save the camera though. Yeah, facts, facts. Because truly, you know, it could start up at any second again. <laughs> we should probably be watching for cars. Maybe good idea not to get hit. I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Nothing says backpacking like Making your own, first of all, washing your own clothes. An engineering masterpiece <laughs> created. Washing your own clothes and then drying your own clothes. We got a whole system going on here. I think it's pretty great. What do you think? Storm? I think it's an engineering masterpiece. <laughs> Absolutely. Fantastic. Sick. Got some hummus, pita bread, uh, uh, Greek falafel. Don't know what Simone's doing, assuming it has something to do with Malaysia. I'm about to dig in. What are we doing right now? At this moment, space and time had stopped, and all he could think about was his softy. <laughs> softy. We're having a softy. Simone's gotten this three times now. This is your third time. That's one of my like OG Indian go-to foods. Yeah, it's uh, yellow dal and some roti. It's like kind of like non bread, would you say? Similar. Similar, yeah. So uh, figured I'd give it a try. We've uh, found ourselves a tour guide. His name is what's his name again? Shoma. Shom. I think his name is Shom. Uh, and he has taken us to Eco Park. He's actually just waiting for us right now. But uh, Eco Park, we don't really know what it is. It's kind of, it looks like kind of just a little attraction park. <laughs> it's a COVID-19. Um, so we're gonna check this out. Seems kind of cool. Uh, 30 rupee to get in here, which is like, 40 cents. which is like 40 cents. This park is massive. We saw it on a big map. There's a whole bunch of different kind of parts to the park. Right now we're in the, the jungle part. Very moist, very dense. The, uh, the, the foliage is beautiful. Kind of really unlike anything we really see in the US. Um, <clears throat> smells kind of sweet. We can shower here, bro. We can, After we sweat, we can shower. Uh, we sweat our nuts off and <laughs> go take a shower. At we Eagle damn near park. need to take a shower every like five minutes. If you know me, you know going to botanical gardens is one of my all-time favorite things to do. And we didn't really know that this place was gonna have a botanical garden in it. It's kind of, it has a lot of different attractions, but it's uh, really, really beautiful so far. So Simone, I don't know about you, but uh, this is a kind of place where, you know, if I was trying to riz up my lady, I would definitely take her here. What do you think? Yeah, it's a date spot for is sure. It? It's a date spot, it's a family spot, it's a homie spot. Really, it's like for anybody. And for the Riz. <laughs> I'm kidding. This is a really beautiful spot and uh, we kind of just stumbled upon it. It was part of our tour from our tour guide. But Simone and I just decided, because this place is so massive, we are like, hey, we're going to spend the last part of our time in Kolkata here. <laughs> Wait, hold on, Simone, what did you say? I said, let's, one thing we didn't get in India yet is a disease, so we, let's go swimming. Why not? All right, Simone, so now that we've been in India for a week, of course, only one city, and this is just off the cuff too, so however you're feeling right now, what are your main takeaways, feelings, emotions about experiencing Kolkata in India for the first time? It was good, I'm glad we did it. And I think it's a good place to go if you have anxiety, probably like fix your anxiety, make you go out of your comfort zone. I don't think I was too out of my comfort zone though. Like I was pretty prepared for it. It was kind of what I expected. Um, yeah, it's fun. It's wild. We'll see some shit. 
Um, obviously, if you know Simone, Simone has traveled, you said 50 different countries? No, probably like 30 maybe. Anyways, so about 30, 20, 28 more than I have. So Simone has experienced a lot of the world, a lot of Asia already. Uh, I haven't, this was my first time in Asia, first time in India. Uh, I'm gonna have to definitely add more to this at some point in time, but uh, kind of adding on to what Simone said, um, <clears throat> in, in regards to the fixing your anxiety part, like this just being here and seeing all the, the real life human suffering kind of makes all of our issues in America trivial. Um, because there is just so much um, uh, poverty and sickness. Um, but I will say, one of the things I, w I, I was actually journaling about today is that everybody is, not everybody, but there is a lot of happiness here. And, and I think people do a good job of finding happiness in, in small things, which is a really beautiful thing. Also, I was really surprised with how friendly everybody was. Um, one of the things I, I feel like I experienced, like the first day I was, I probably felt more unsafe than I ever had just because there were lots of people around, everybody looking at me because obviously I look very foreigner. Um, but I also have never seen as many genuine smiles as I've seen here, which is not something that I expected. Um, yeah, people have been very, very friendly. Obviously, it's a very, very dense place. Um, I've had a, I've had a really good time. I think this is not exactly a place where you, you know, in quote, go vacation. This is more of like a, the, the download that I got, uh, this is more of like a, a, a place you go to experience a very different culture and kind of contextualize your life and also just immerse yourself in a place that's very different from, well, for us, you know, the U.S., uh, yeah, those were... I think going off what you, Xander, said about uh, realizing that we're super privileged in America, I think that's... Would you mind holding this? I think I think it's super true that uh, it makes you really thankful for being born in America and having a U.S. passport. I think there's also two sides to that coin, too, because you can use the narrative that somebody... There's always somebody that has it worse to... Derash to to like irrational irrationalize anybody's feeling of suffering or issues. So yes, somebody of course doesn't have it worse, but it makes me really thankful that I was lucky enough to be born in America and have a U.S. passport. Yeah, truly, honestly, I can't. This is why I take this back down my arms. Good. Uh, this is why I, I just think it 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 makes you really. Uh, gracious. It gives you a lot of gratitude for, for what we have. I, I feel extremely thankful. Um, I, I feel like with uh, the, the the way people live here, it it makes me feel like I, I you know I grew up in a in a middle class family in the United States. But a middle class experience in the United States is like the dream here. Being Uber rich, being a, it's a, it's a dream. The level of comfort that I experience on a day-to-day -day basis, the safety that I feel, the amount of opportunities that I have, the access to resources that I have, like anybody, most people here, granted we were in, only in Kolkata, but I would say most people here would, would love the opportunity to have that, so we I have a lot. Honestly, like I didn't really feel unsafe here. I read that Kolkata is like one of the safer cities in India compared to like Delhi. I think I'd feel different if we were in Delhi or Mumbai, but I didn't really feel unsafe. I thought like people were pretty genuine. I think I have good intuition after all these years of traveling and it proved correct. Yeah, yeah, no, for me it was just like, because I haven't been to many really big cities, of course, other than like New York City, Chicago, LA, like I haven't been to big cities in other countries. And so like, excuse me, it was new to me. But yeah, I also felt a really genuine, like 
safety by the by the end of this. One of the things I notice is that like people kind of just leave their stuff out, even though like when we were in the markets. Yeah, like backpacks and stuff. People just left like merchandise out with thousands of people crossing like at all times, and they didn't really worry about. Um, they didn't really worry about people. Hi, what's up? You want to say hi? Hi. What's hi. your name? What's your name? MD Wifamala. Okay. Nice what's your name? MD Aftawa. My name is Aftawa. Uh, Xander and Simone. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you guys. What's up, Rumpy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're uh, getting in a picture right now. All right, we'll end this. That's me to do that. So we, uh, we made some friends. What's your name? My name is Aftar. Aftar, what's your name? My name is Ufran. Ufran? MD Gulfam Khan. Okay. Okay. What's I'm the good dude. The good dude? Oh. The good dude. The good dude. <laughs> Very Hi. nice. Yeah, yeah. This has been like one of the most awesome parts is everybody, like I said, is so friendly. You guys are so nice. Everybody's so friendly. Everybody just kind of comes up and uh, says hi. We'll, we'll give hugs, take pictures. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's good. Thanks for saying hi, you guys. It was, it was awesome to meet you. Nice to meet you. We are uh, walking all the way around the little lake. Eco Park is kind of back where that dome is, if you can see it. We've kind of exited Eco, Eco Park, and now we're just kind of walking around this little, I, I believe it's a man-made lake. Um, this is honestly one of the, I would say the most touristy places. There's like a little Eiffel Tower right here. Eiffel There's Tower. Tourism, though. Yeah. Like we saw one, uh, one, we saw one white person. But other than that, it's been all local people. Yeah. Okay, so we met these guys. Yeah. And uh, they're showing us your team. We met some local guys. Uh, some local, our, some local uh, footballers. FIFA squad. Okay. Oh, Arturo Martinez. Arturo Martinez. Um, Bappe. Mm -hmm. Julian Alvarez. Julian Alvarez. Uh, Griezmann. Messi. Griezmann. Antonio Griezmann. Luka Modric. Luka Modric Jude Bellingham. Uh, Hernandez. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, John Stones. Yeah. Thiago Silva. Akraf Hakimi, ah, hey, nice, nice, nice. Very good team, very good team. You guys like cricket, you got like soccer more than cricket? Yeah. Soccer better than cricket or no? No, no, no. No, no, okay. We like football. We, okay, okay, oh, football. Yeah, I forgot, football. We, uh, we, Simone and I, we really, we like, we like football. Yeah. Yeah, we don't yeah. really have cricket in America. No. Nice no cricket. America no like it in cricket. No, there is no cricket. In no cricket. No. For the first time, we uh, we we visited a cricket stadium. Cricket stadium. Uh, Eden, and Eden, Eden Gardens. Eden Gardens. Yeah. Eden Gardens. Yeah. 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 It's very nice. It's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is great. One of the things we were looking forward to doing was going to Mickey D's and we finally made it on our last night. Uh, <laughs> I'm very curious to see what's on this menu. We'll check back in in a moment. So we're both finally in sitting down. It has taken <laughs> about half hour for us to get our food, which is of course abnormal, you know, fast food in America usually. However, this has been the busiest McDonald's I have ever seen in my whole entire life, hands down. There's so many people in here, I could barely get a seat. And the footprint of this building is not very big either. But anyways, I got a something you'll never see in the US. Big spicy McWrap, a paneer wrap, a veggie, this was veggie surprise, um, cheese fries, and a butter chicken grilled burger, and Simone got a Big spicy McRap, filet of fish, because he's a filet of fish hoe, and some, um, and some fries. All right, Simone, you ready to dig in? You ready to dig in? This is all kind of what it looks like, too. Yeah, let's see the inside of that, though. Can I see the inner yes. part? <laughs> cool. Now, take a go. Okay, so I just finished this big spicy McRap paneer. Genuinely so fire. I wish they had that in the US. Um, I also just finished the, the Szechuan veggie burger, and that was also very good. Um, I'm gonna try the butter grilled chicken burger next, and um, the cheesy fries were, yeah, 
they're okay. Um, but all of this came to 590 ringgit, which is like, rupee. sorry, rupee. Ringgit's gonna be our next country. Um, which comes to like 750? 750 for four things. USD. Yeah, 750 US dollars. Okay, so consensus. Paneer wrap, fire. I wish they had that. Simone, your favorite was what? The uh, mixed spicy wrap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I can I'll confirm. Absolutely fire. I can confirm that was very good. Today couldn't have worked out better being so close to the airport. What? Today couldn't have worked out better. I know, right? Being this close to the airport. I know. And like, not even realizing it. I know. We have made it to the airport in Kolkata. Uh, we had a little, <clears throat> we had a little visa mix-up, um, but we got it kind of resolved. I am here drinking a Heineken. Um, our most expensive meal this this whole entire last week, I believe, was well, it was today actually at McDonald's. It was five hundred and. 70 rupees, I believe. Two beers, two Heinekens were 1,090 rupees, which really translates to uh, about the same exact price as it would be in the US. So, um, but I'm excited for the next part of the journey. Um, this is Simone's, this is Simone's place, um, and he loves it. It's, it's one of his favorite favorite places in the world, and um, I'm just super excited to be somewhere that has a beach and tropical, and with these kinds of things, I, I almost have no clue what I'm getting myself into. That's, I think, part of the fun. Um, but yeah, mind open, heart open. As Dee says, you'll never know what can happen, so I'm, I'm just excited for... I'm excited for everything that, that's gonna come. It's gonna be, it's gonna be kind of crazy.